sections in a menu system along the top of the screen here. And it starts out with user details. Now this is everything that we have about your account and the things that you'll need to uh, help us manage it. Some of these things you'll need when you enter a support case. Some of these things you'll need, like for example, the IP address of your RBS server is right here in case you ever wonder what that is. Uh, we use that to, uh, to authenticate you when you log into the portal. And some information about your purchase date and your, your expiry date and the numbers of credits that you have here. Um, up in the topper, top left side of the portal is the new file sharing system. Now this is, uh, this is kind of like um, Dropbox where you can uh, upload files to the portal and they're available to be downloaded by yourselves or by anybody else. You can upload anything you want. You have two, I think it's two gigabytes of storage space that, that uh, you can store things in. Um, now this is just for any file. So if you want to upload uh, your documentation here, you can do that. Uh, if you click this button to download it, you click this button to trash it, you click this button if you want to email somebody a link to download this. And, this, and they don't have to have a, uh, an account on the portal to download this. So you can send this to customers or your mom or anything you want. Uh, you can click here to read the uh, comments. That long, the comments are actually longer than, uh, there's the comments. They're actually longer than what displays on screen when we ran out of room. Let's see here. So that's how that works. Uh, to upload files, you just click Add Files. And then you, you browse through your uh, hard drive here. And you, you click the files that you want to upload. Uh, it's also searchable. So if you upload a bunch of files, you can search for the files here. OK, this next part is one of my favorites because I wrote it. This is the graphics conversion tool. Um, we've had a lot of problems with uh, a, lot of, a lot of partners when they uh, brand their software, their RBS client software. Um, they, they have to, you have to do it exactly. I mean, the, the, the graphics, the icons, they all have to be exact, the right uh, table, the right palette of colors, uh, the right size to within one pixel. Uh, there's absolutely no room for, there's no margin for error at all. So, uh, so many people had trouble doing that that we wrote this. Now what this allows you to do is to upload your graphics and click this button that says convert and this system will convert your graphics from any one of 144 different uh, graphic formats uh, to exactly the size, shape, and color that you need to import into your software. Just to prove that it'll do anything, I made an icon out of Mitch Rom. Many of you know Mitch. I'm not, I don't know if he's here with us today. Uh, but I grabbed his picture from his website and used it to create icons. And look, it did a really good job. And I actually imported these into the uh, client software. And uh, I got Mitch client software now. <laughs> it's great. Um, for best results, uh, the original graphics should be larger than the converted graphics. They could be any size, but larger is better because uh, if they're smaller, then the system's going to try to expand them. Um, for the icons, use a source graphic with one-to-one -one dimensions. That's as tall as it is wide. And for the splash and about screens, use a source graphic that has two to one dimension, so it's twice as wide as it is tall. Just the dimensions matter. Nothing else matters. The color, the size, nothing else, no, nothing else matters. Be aware that when you create icons out of uh, graphics, uh, we're going to reduce everything in the graphic, everything. So if you've got a, oh, I don't know, a graphic like this one, this one would not look good. Uh, as an icon if we simply shrunk it. What we really have to do with the icons is before you shrink them, you have to expand some of the elements in there, make the lines thicker, make, uh, uh, eliminate some of the small things that won't show up as a 16 by 16 or 32 by 32 image. Um, okay, so once you have browsed through, you, you've uploaded your files, you pick convert, you have two options after that. You can, well, you, you'll view them. It'll convert them, and then it'll display them right here on screen for you. You can either download these icons and images to your hard drive at, at home and then uh, use them to, uh, to uh, brand your software with the RBS Manager software, the console application that's on your server. Another option is to copy these graphics into my installer, this option right here that says Update. Um, another feature of the portal, which I'm going to show you next, 
is that it has uh, a branding and a client branding and customization tool built into it with a few more features than the one that's in your console application. Uh, one of those features is to is that it can import these graphics. So if you want to copy them into your installer that's hosted on the portal, click this update button right here, and it'll copy those over into your installers. I'm going to move on now to the uh, branding and customization tool. That's this tool. Now. Most of you are probably familiar with how to do the branding and customization, the wizard that comes with the uh, RBS manager software. That's the console application. So a lot of this is going to look familiar. We modeled this after that. But because this is uh, hosted how it is on our servers in the data center in Memphis, we've got a little more leeway in what we can let you do here. So uh, I'll go over these things. Um, on this first page where it says branding, this is all of the stuff that makes your software your own. This is where you can change to your own product name, like Rob's Backup Service. Uh, the company name can be whatever you want it to be. This is the screen captions. You've been through all this before, probably. Uh, you'll find that it's simpler uh, with the portal. Let me just pull down and see what all else we can add here. Um, this is where you change the displays. If you want to upload your graphics, that's the about screen, the splash screen, and the four different kinds of icons. You can, you can create those locally and upload them here. Or you could have just pushed the button that says update over on the graphics conversion tool and it would have overwritten over here. Here, of course, you can add your own custom top level menu options and your own custom end user agreement. I'll click next. We'll go to the next page. This is just a series of pages. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six pages. And of course, on the backup sets page, we've got several tabs that I'll show you. Um, this is text. This is uh, much of the text that shows up in the installation and in the client itself are all right here. Uh, you can change any of this text that you want. For those of you who need a multilingual option, we've also got that built into the portal. You can. Uh, select from any number of different languages. This is the Backup Sets tab. Now this will also look familiar to you if you've used the one that's on the RBS Manager console application because we modeled it almost exactly after that, at least as good as we can do with HTML. This is the page that shows you the backup type and schedule. You can set that for incremental, differential, full, or bit backup. The backup location, you, this is new. This is uh, uh, new to some of you who, who've uh, uh, just now upgraded to a, a current version. Um, these days with version 11.9.3 and 4, 4 is out right now, um, you have the ability to back up, uh, do a hybrid backup. And this will send a backup not only to the RBS server, that's this choice, but it can also send to a local mirror, that's uh, any device in the local network. That, uh, can, uh, can, that can look like a hard drive. You can also send to a cloud service like uh, Box.net or Dropbox or Google, Google Drive. And that, what this does is it goes directly from the client software to these other services. So it doesn't use your inbound bandwidth at your RBS server or any of your inbound resources. You have the option when you go, uh, when you edit this, you have the option to disallow the use of a local mirror or the, lo or the cloud service. Um, let me just, I've got some questions here. Let's just take a quick break and read the questions. Um, the attempt, uh, Rick wants to know about the attempt hour. Uh, let's see, attempt hour, uh, attempt window. Um, this is the start time and this is the attempt window. This is the time that the R backup client software will wake up and start its sequence to do a backup. This is the amount of time, the attempt window, that's the amount of time that it will attempt to do the backup. Uh, it will, or it can, depending on how you set other settings up in here, it can start at 12 o'clock and continue through the night until at 8 a.m. when it stops. It, it'll stop at 8 a.m. so that you can use the, uh, so that you can use the software, um, use your other software in your network without uh, any any uh, confirmation messages popping up or any any uh, progress messages or anything like that. Uh, so this is uh, this is set for eight hours. At eight hours, it'll stop, and then the next session, the next day, it will resume where it left off, and it'll do that day after day until it gets caught up. 
Um, Jay wants to know if we can choose local and cloud and bypass the RBS server. Why, yes, you can. Uh, you, don't even, you don't have to use the RBS server at all. You can click local mirror if you want just a local backup, and it'll do that. However, let me go back, let me put this back to its default. However, it's, all, it, it's still going to uh, uh, authenticate with your RBS server. So your RBS server has to be on, and the customer that uses this software has to have an active and unsuspended account on your server. So, uh, so you, you do have to have an RBS server, but you don't have to send the uh, backups there. Um, to answer a question that hasn't been answered, asked yet about this, uh, yeah, you can have completely different backup sets for each one of these. So you might have some files that you want to send to the RBS server and some files that you want to back up locally and then some, a different set of files that you want to send off to a cloud service. I think that's pretty cool. Let's look at what's next here. This is the auto select filters. I won't go through all of what this does. Uh, if anybody needs to know what that is, give me a call and I'll talk to you personally about it. But uh, this looks sorry, very much like the auto select filters in the uh, branding wizard that comes with the RBS Manager console app. Purge and retention settings are all set here. Um, for those of you who are just new to us uh, from an older version, we now have a no encryption option. If you want to send things unencrypted, you can. Um, just well, uh, yeah, right, right. I was going to tell you something else, but I'll get to it later. Um, this is where you do the backup exclusions. If you want to program wildcard file exclusions, you can do that here. Uh, wildcard file exclusions are anything that Windows can identify as a wildcard. These will be excluded from backups. In fact, they won't even be displayed to your users on the file selection menu. Things like the recycle bin, uh, system volume information, uh, temporary internet files, all of these kinds of things really don't need to be backed up and they bloat the backups and they take a lot of time. So uh, if you don't want your users to select those, just list them somewhere in here and they won't even be available for selection. Okay, the next major tab in the branding wizard is server settings. Um, these set, this is interesting stuff. Uh, I know it looks kind of bold, dull and boring right now, but I like it. Um, here's where you put in your server's IP address. Uh, you can use the server locator. If you check mark use server locator, it puts your server locator host name in there for you. Um, this one is an exciting new feature for, uh, available to the portal, on, portal only. This enables automatic software updates. This is for your client software. So if you want to enable automatic software updates, click yes. And if you want it to update from the portal, check mark that. What that does is now all the client software that you build will check in with, the, with your account on the portal periodically to see if there's an update for the client software. If there is, it'll download and update it for you automatically. This is where you turn on event logging. Oh, here's another good thing about the portal. With the portal, you could digitally sign your EXE files. Just leave that to yes. I think yes is probably the default. The, um, the, this, will, this will sign your executable with a, uh, with a, a VeriSign Class 3 code signing certificate. The, the, the certificate that we use is issued to Online Holdings LLC, which is the holding company for remote backup systems. That's, that's, that's us, but it's by a different name. Uh, we do business as remote backup systems everywhere, so it's, it's not, not super easy to find remote backup systems by doing a web search for online holdings. Um, these are the client locks. You've seen those before. Uh, and these are some more on-off things that you can set. Uh, and uh, you can have a look at that. We've got some other webinars that go into more detail about exactly what each of these are. But if you log into the portal, you can actually see, because it's got each one of these has uh, some help text built right with it. Let me pause just a minute and answer a few questions before we move on to the next tab. Um, Sam's got a really bad echo going. I don't know what to say about that. I don't. I don't hear it. Of course, I don't. I don't hear anything in my ear when we're doing these. I'm sorry about that, Sam. If anybody else is getting that echo, let me know about it. And what I'll do is report it to go to webinar and see if they can fix it for next time. Um, Odd wants to know if uh, we support Azure as a cloud service. 
Uh, let me tell you how we support cloud services. Uh, for this is for uh, uh, way back in the backup sets when we were. Let me go back over there. This refers to this uh, backup location server, local mirror, and cloud service. The um, these uh, local cloud service is uh, wants to point to a virtual folder or a virtual drive. So the cloud service that this points to has to be mappable as a drive or a folder uh, in the local file system. Now, if Azure, I don't think Azure has it, but uh, I know Google Drive has it, and a few, and a backup. Uh, um, let's see, Dropbox has it, Box.net has it. And a few others. They have a little little application that you install on the computer, and it it grabs a free drive, or you tell it a folder that you want, and everything that you copy into that drive or folder is sent right off to the cloud service. That's how we do it. We don't have any currently. We don't have any direct um, uh, direct drivers that can talk directly from us to somebody else. Now we will, but for now, that's how that works. Uh, let's see here. Uh, wants to know, Jay wants to know if there's an iPhone and Android app coming. Um, I'm going to go ahead and answer that now. I was going to wait until the end of the presentation. Um, we, the first Android and iPhone apps that we come out with are going to be for you guys, the partners. They're going to allow you to have uh, uh, all of uh, some really nice reports and some management utilities, everything you can do. Uh, basically, everything you can do at the portal will be available on an app, uh, plus some interesting features like uh, you'll be able to push a button uh, and look at a graph of your, your backups. You'll be able to see who backed up last night, who didn't back up last night, and you'll be able to take some action to fix it. That's all going to be done through the portal. Uh, the way we'll do that is we have uh, a, a little um, portal connector application that you'll run on your RBS server. You, you turn it on. You enter your portal's login, and then it disappears, and it communicates between the portal and your RBS server. So when we have that, when we release that, you'll be able to go into the portal and look at graphs and reports and all kinds of neat stuff about your own backup service, and you'll be able to take some action there. Um, so that's the first thing that's going to come out. We, we, we will eventually have an iPhone and Android app that will back up the iPhone and the Android. Nobody's ever heard me say that, but I'm just saying it for the first time now. And it will be out this year. I'm not exactly sure when. Um, ben wants to know if the server locator works even if you move your servers or assign them to a new, new, IP, new IP address. And yep, Ben, that's what it does. The server locator is a dynamic IP, uh, is a dynamic DNS server. Um, your RBS server has a client built into it that reports your uh, that, that pings the server locator about every five minutes um, normally, and uh, it what's it basically doing is it's reporting its public IP address. The our server locator sees the address that the ping came from, and it records that, and it uh, assigns it to as a uh, as a record in, in DNS. And uh, uh, then your let me go over here to the advanced tab. No, it must be the options tab. Right, that. So it assigns your current IP address to this. Um, whenever your IP address changes, the server locator finds out about it within less than a second. So uh, it works. It works out very well. If you use the server locator when you build your uh, clients, you use that number right there instead of an IP address. Then your clients will follow you wherever you go. You know, you'll be able to pick up your server and go to your granny's house and put it in her basement and hook it up to her cable modem in the event that a hurricane's bearing down on you. And within a half a second of plugging it into the cable modem, all of your backups will start coming to Granny's house. Uh, let's see. We talked about the updates and the updates from portals. Uh, these are client locks. Let me pull on down and see what we have here. These are some other advanced yes, no things that you can turn on and off. And that's where you install your batch files. A lot of people don't know about this. It's a very old feature that's been in there for a long time. The um, the, this is a pre-batch file and a post-batch file. They're basically command files that you can run before and after backups. Oh, a good example would be if you wanted to, if you if you wanted to broadcast a network-wide message uh, that says, "Hey, backups are about to start," uh, you could type that in this one, and then you could do the same thing down here with a message that says, "Okay, we're done with backups now." Let's go to the advanced. 
this is a lot of advanced stuff. Um, if you're uh, if you're really familiar with the software, you can mess with this stuff on your own. But if not, uh, just call us and we'll talk to you. We'll tell you whether you should turn it on or off or not. When you first light up your account with the portal, uh, all of this stuff will be set in the recommended uh, the recommended settings. So, for example, exclude ten files sh should default to yes. This should default to ten thousand. These are all the uh, recommended stuff. You can also set a maximum file size limit if you want to. Free space, free space threshold, etc. Um, let's see. Paul wants to know if the client EXEs that are created in the portal will use the RBS registrar and auto create accounts. Yeah, they will, and that's this section that we're looking at right now. It's called the registration wizard. The registration wizard, uh, when you've been looking at it with your RBS manager console app, it's in a different location than the customize uh, uh, the location where you, you customize and brand the client software. Here, we've put it right in there with where it belongs. So if you want to use the registration wizard, turn it on and uh, right here, and then just enter all the information about it as you go along here, all through all these tabs. Uh, and next time you build your installers, it'll build the registration wizard in with it, and it'll be activated on installation of your software. Let me see if there are any other. Uh, let's see. Jason says, woo! Uh, uh, I think that's about it for now. Um, if I don't if I don't get to your questions during the session, which is uh, uh, near an end here, then I'll uh, answer them by email. Okay. Once you've got the registration, once you've got the uh, branding and customization exactly like you want it, you can click Build Installer. When you click Build Installer, it asks you, well, which version do you want to build? Personal, desktop, and server. And you type an executable file name and some comments, and you, click, you type build installer. Since it can take up to five minutes to build it, I'm not going to build it right now because I built it just before we started. I'll show you where it ended up. When you build installers, they go in this next section called download installers, and there they are. Whenever you build installers, it builds uh, one executable for each version of the client software. There's the server edition, there's the desktop edition, and there's the personal edition. Um, it, it also builds a file called clupgrade.exe. Now, clupgrade.exe is a generic upgrader for the client software. With this file, you can ship it to anybody. You can give it to any of your customers, no matter whether they have a server system or a desktop system or a personal system. All they have to do is run that, and it'll upgrade this client software to the most current version. And here we have this. Um, this was a this was a real problem to uh, program, and it's done now. Um, if you click this on, then what will happen is uh, next time your clients check for an upgrade, they'll check with the portal, and they will be upgraded. If you turn it off, which is where I think the default should be, and, and hopefully it is, uh, they won't upgrade. Now, the, the reason this here is here as an on-off switch is to uh, put the upgrades in your hands. Uh, you have the, the ability to determine whether you want to do an upgrade to all of your clients or not. This will upgrade all of them in mass. So uh, we recommend that when we when we distribute a software upgrade, you you look at it yourself. Maybe install it on your own computer and make sure it's good. Make sure it's exactly what you want. And then when you're sure and you want to upgrade your clients, come back here and click on, and it'll start to upgrade them. Um, let's see here. Uh, let me look at some more uh, questions. Um, there are some questions. Ben and Rick, you've got some questions that aren't going to fit into this topic, but what I'll do is uh, will you email me those questions uh, at rob at remote-backup.com? If you do, I'll be glad to get answers to those. A couple of them, a couple of these that I didn't answer, I've got to get some uh I've got a question, uh, Pinku, over in tech support. Make sure I give you the right, the right answer. This next uh, next section is called download. There's some things in here that can import and export files and customers. Oh, there are there are all kinds of little uh, tools and executables and pictures and things in here that 
tech support might ask you to download. Uh, I think that the repair wizards are in here, uh, and you can search. It's this uh, this library is searchable, and you can download it. You can you won't be able to trash it. You see that only because I'm logged in as administrator. You can email a link. You can download it and email a link. That's handy stuff. Just a central download location for software updates. This is for your own RBS server. Uh, the um, the uh, uh, when you when we issue it, an upgrade, you go here to get it, and you just click download server side upgrades. If you want to know what's new in it, you can click here, and this is some help on how to upgrade server and client. I'm going to show this to you. Some this uh, some people uh, find this problem this a problem. All right, I've just clicked download server side upgrades, and it reports to me. Uh, let's see. Nope, it reports to me it's available. Often it'll report to you that you've already downloaded it. The system knows when the last time you downloaded was. It, it, it knows what you downloaded. If you ordered a download previously and for some reason didn't install it or don't want to install or, or, or you want to re-download it again, it'll say up in this message box, uh, you've already downloaded your software, but would you like to download it again? And you just press the download button again. It'll download it for you. The uh, installers, uh, the upgrader, upgraders for the uh, server-side uh, software are all executable, so you just download them and run them on the RBS server software, on, on the RBS server itself. Um, this is support. This is where you can get tech support, online tutorials, users' manuals, things like that. It's just a quick link to, to uh, support. This is where you change your password. This is web files. This is, this is my thing. I did this. The web files, um, this is where you can add files that you want to be available on the web. So uh, for example, here's a picture that I want to put in my email notifications. So I upload it to here, and whenever I want to use it in my, up, in my um, email notifications, I can, let's see, view image, copy image location. You right click it and copy it, and watch, I'm going to paste it up here. Here's the URL for that image, and when I click Enter, it'll show on screen. So what this is, it's a, a really easy to use uh, hosting location. You can host um, pay web pages, uh, graphics, you know, things up here that you want to use uh, in your email notifications mostly, um, and that's where you do that. Uh, this is the portal help system. The portal is pretty simple, so the help system is pretty small. Um, I will tell you one thing about this that's not on there, but because it doesn't require a menu option, everybody who has uh, maintenance in force has access to the portal. Um, you also have on your uh, RBS manager console application uh, an option that says uh, uh, that says email notifications. There should be a checkbox a checkbox in there under SMTP server, and that checkbox says use portal SMTP service. If you check mark that, then all of your email notifications will go through the portal. If you don't have, uh, you use this in case you don't have your own SMTP service or your, S, your own SMTP service is down for whatever reason. Just check mark that and then from that point on all your email notifications will go out, of the, out through the portal's SMTP service. And let's see here. That, oh, that is all I have about what's going on right now. I've already told you some of the really cool things that are going to be added to this portal later. Um, a, a lot of interesting stuff. The, the link with your RBS server, the, the reporting, the support for, uh, for, for smartphone apps. Uh, we're going to add, um, oh gosh, a number of other things to this. Uh, and I'll probably write an article about it to try to uh, tickle your, your, your uh, fancy. Uh, let's see. Let me look and see if I've got any more questions that need to be answered. Uh, if you want to ask them, now would be the time. Um, will that upgrade client installers you've made to the RBS server? Dave, Dave wanted to know if it'll upgrade client installers that you've made through the RBS server. It will not. Um, this will upgrade installers that you make only through this. Now, if you want to, if you want to use the clupdate.exe file to upgrade an installer that's been made on something else. Then yeah, it'll from that point on you can use the resources of the portal to do your uh, your upgrades to your clients. But first you got to upgrade them with 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 the CL upgrade that you've made from the portal. 
Um, Jason wants to know when is this available to install, and uh, it's available now. You, you, everybody has access to the portal. You can go there right now. If your maintenance is good, uh, then uh, you can do it. Um, let's see. That's it. That's all I have for everybody right now. I've, I've stayed pretty much on time. Uh, any questions? Email me. It's rob at remote-backup.com, especially those of you who I did not get to uh, because of time limitation or because of uh, topic limitation. Um, any help with the portal, uh, go through our tech support system. Uh, remember, when you first log in, your first log, is, your first login is your your serial number. It's your email address, your serial number, and then your serial number for the uh, for the the uh, login to. Uh, for the password, and then be sure the first thing you do is go here and change that. Okay, um, I have recorded this, so I'm going to post this on the web later today in our multimedia section. Uh, anybody has questions, again, it's rob at remote-backup.com. Uh, you can also phone in. Our number is 901-405-1234. And thanks, everybody. I appreciate you being here today. Bye.